Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for another Unity Editor scripting tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to do some project setup by creating some more directories uh, and scripts, and then we're going to talk a little bit about project, uh, or a little bit about scriptable objects. Okay, so first I'm going to start off by adding the directories that we need for this project. Okay, so these are the folders that we're going to need for this project. So if you want to go ahead and uh, make sure you can match this directory, then we'll be able to get ready or get started on the uh, scripting side of things. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and import my directory into my project. Okay, now if you can see on the left side here, if you have all of these scripts, then you will be ready to get started. Now what I want to do is open up this types class and add some enumerations to this. And these are enumerations that will be needed to satisfy the requirements for our enemy designer tool. So first off, we need a uh, enumeration for, and what I want to do actually before I do that, enumerations can uh, exist outside of classes, meaning all we need is a namespace to put these in. So we'll create a namespace called types. And that's all we need for our enums. So we'll say public enum mage damage type. And then we'll have one for mage weapon type. And I'm going to speed things along so you guys don't have to sit through uh, all of this. And then you guys can just copy the code after I finish. Okay, so you guys can go ahead and copy this code. I'm gonna move on to the base, uh, the, the mage, the rogue, and the warrior classes now. And so what these need to do is simply hold the data that we're going to be creating from our enemy designer tool. Now you'll notice also that if we look in my resources directory, we have character data. And inside that directory, we have character, mage, rogue, and warrior data. Uh, and so, as you might have guessed, my mage class, which is going to go on my physical character in the game, just needs to hold a reference to mage data. So what I'll do for that is simply create a public variable for mage uh, data. And this is what I'll be actually setting from uh, my editor tool. And that's all we need in these classes. So same thing for Rogue. And same thing for Warrior. Okay, and that's all we need to do with these classes. Now let's open up my data classes. And this is where we're going to be talking about scriptable objects. So instead of deriving from mono behavior, we're going to derive scriptable object. So what is a scriptable object? Well, it's really just a class that is built to ease the transition from uh, data into Unity. So uh, if you're ever dealing with data or instances of data, so imagine you have uh, a weapon class that derives scriptable object, uh, and you would do that because you have a lot of different variations of weapons. So I'll say anytime you have a uh, high variation of a particular object, you might want to make a class that derives scriptable object. And it's also very easy to manipulate data and send that data to objects uh, when we're talking about editor programming. Okay, so my character data class needs to have things that are generic to all of my game classes, such as mage, warrior, or rogue. So what I want in here is a reference to the prefab that will be shown in the game. And then I'll have some more variables here that are generic to all of my characters. Okay, once I have those uh, member variables set, 
what I want to do is go into my other data classes and I want to make sure that these data classes derive from my character data because what I'm really going to be working with in my editor script is mage data, warrior data, and rogue data and since they will all derive from character data each one of those will carry with it these member variables without me having to explicitly define them in their own classes. So for my mage data all I really want uh, and first what I need to do is add the using statement for types which is the namespace that we created right here because what I want to do is add public mage damage type call that damage type and then public mage weapon type and these are the only two variables that will set uh, mage apart from warrior or rogue now what I want to do is go back to Unity because I want to show you guys something that's cool with scriptable objects. So we all know that we can right click in the project pane and go to create and we see a list of assets. Well it turns out that it's actually possible to see our scriptable object in here uh, and spawn an instance of that data object. But as you can see right now we don't see any of our data classes in here. Now what I need to do is add an attribute to the to my data classes if I want to see that. So what I'll do is I'll come up to my mage data class and I'll add this attribute to the top. So we want to specify a file name and then also a menu name which is what's going to be showing in the drop down region of the asset menu. So for that we want to say character data slash mage. So if I go to create we can see character data at the top and then we can see mage. Now let's see what happens when I create that. We see new mage data and then over here on the right in the inspector we can say we can see all of the member variables that we created in both the character data class and in the mage data class. So this is exactly what we want. Now let's define the warrior data class and the rogue data class. So warrior data is going to be very similar. I'm going to increase the speed of this playback so you guys don't have to uh, sit through me programming all of this. But again, the concepts of these data classes are very similar. So if I go up to character data, I can see all of these in here. Uh, so let's click on rogue. We can see new rogue data. We have weapon type and strategy type, which is what we defined in the class. I can go to warrior, and I can see class type and weapon type, along with all of the character data that I defined in that class. So everything looks good and set up. So I think that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to get back into the editor scripting uh, now that we have all of our data defined. And we're going to uh, actually start populating a little bit this window. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.